Watchung Hills Regional High School panel on what's next, uh, the next steps with mental health. My name is Gwen Blake. I'm one of the student assistance counselors and I, along with my um, partner in crime, Mr. Kevin Rice, uh, student assistance counselor, um, have put together this panel of professionals to talk to you about what the next steps are in mental health. Um, this is valuable information for your seniors as they are going off into college and career or the military trade school um, because mental health needs don't stop at graduation. Mental health needs are things that we will be taking part of all of our lives. So we have a few people gathered that can talk about different aspects um, from different arenas and we're thrilled um, to have everyone here with us. Um, tonight you will be hearing from Danielle Kamarte Williams of Mobile Response and Stabilization Services, Naomi Persaud uh, from Richard Hall Community Health and Wellness Center, um, Gina Kailar from Raritan Valley Community College, and Dr. Chris McKittrick from Monmouth University, as well as Sergeant Brian Shermer from the US Marines. Um, all Welcome and thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, I'm going to not delay, um, oh, except to say we are going to be doing a Q&A at the end. Um, at the bottom of your screen, there is um, a place to place your questions. If you have questions for the panelists as we're going on, please post them and at the end, we are going to um, open up so that you can ask or that we can ask them for you. Um, and all your questions hopefully will be asked, answered, and we will be providing some information at the end on email about all of these resources as well. Um, so Danielle, I'm going to turn the floor over to you and thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, I am Danielle Cromarty Williams. I'm the program director for mobile response of Hutter and Somerset and Warren counties. The New Jersey Department of Children and Families have several branches. One branch is the children's system of care called CSOC. CSOC offers an array of services. Oftentimes you may hear the name Perform Care as well, which handles triaging for CSOC programs. Families can call Perform Care to access mobile response and stabilization services, care management and organization, and family support organizations. I will give a brief overview of each service we provide. The next slide, please. At Mobile Response, we have crisis intervention specialists that are dispatched to homes, schools, or within the community for any youth that are experiencing increased behavioral health and mental health concerns. We can dispatch to youth zero to 21. During transition periods, we have had youth 18 and older call on their own. Youth under 18 would need a guardian consent for services. We can arrive within an hour to meet that youth or family and up to 24 hours at the youth or family's request, such as if someone would like a dispatch to occur after class or work, that's fine. Our goal is to stabilize the concerns and help individuals feel supported. We can link the family to needed supports. Most time we provide linkage to an intensive in-home clinician as needed that will meet with the youth in home or community for eight weeks. Oftentimes we link youth and families to community resources and system partners as well. We are available 24 hours a day and can be called at any time. Most calls we receive are for increased anxiety, depression, family dynamic concerns, and school-related concerns. Mobile Response is designed as an upstream intervention available to support families and youth when they first identify they need assistance based on their definition of the need. Next slide, please. CMO is a little different. CMO is a higher level of care than mobile response. CMO is a longer term care management service, which typically can be open six to nine months or longer as needed for youth five to 21 with complex needs. CMO has care managers that meet with the family and youth two times per month and link families to individualized services such as community resources and counseling services. CMO creates individualized care plans with families to ensure all families are stabilized and make progress towards their goals. CMO often facilitates out-of-home placements, developmental disability services, substance use evaluations, and can assign a family support worker for, from FSO to work with families as needed. The next slide, please. 
FSO offers family support partners, which are individuals who have been able to um, be involved in the children's system of care for their own child previously. So family support partners empower the parents and caregivers to become their best, their child's best advocate by educating them on the CSOC services, by providing educational resources, and that one-to-one -one peer support. Family support partners encourage families to attend support groups and workshops. FSO can also offer uh, educational workshops, support groups for caregivers and parents, a warm line that families can call, and youth partnership. Youth partnership is for youth 13 to 21, which involves um, supervised groups assisting youth with social interactions and discussion. Again, you can access all services by calling Perform Care. The number is listed on the screen. Currently, all services are continuing to be in the field and can be offered remotely as well. All services are free of charge, covered under the Children's System of Care for all families. There is a temporary Medicaid ID that is given to anyone involved in the Children's System of Care. All service lines also have bilingual workers if there's ever needed. Um, and I will now introduce Naomi Prasad, the Clinical Service Director at Richard Hall. Thanks, Danielle, I appreciate it. So good evening, everyone. My name is Naomi Prasad. I'm the Clinical Services Director at Richard Hall Community Health and Wellness Center, which is located in Bridgewater. Uh, our center's vision is to be a leader in integrated healthcare, to build a community that supports opportunities to grow and promote recovery toward the high, highest quality of life for those we serve. Next slide, please. As a certified community behavioral health clinic, we provide a comprehensive range of addiction and mental health services to individuals using evidence-based practices. First, focusing on our child and adolescent services, we offer individual, family, group therapy, psychiatric evaluations, and medication management. Our clini clinical services are all provided by licensed therapists or art therapists, and our comprehensive psychiatric evaluations determine whether medication, me medication intervention would be beneficial. As a certified behavioral health clinic, throughout treatment, we will continue to ensure integration of whole health services, coordinating care between behavioral health and primary medical dental health care. We offer several wellness activities, including yoga and mindfulness, nutrition and exercise wellness. The CCBHC will provide the services of a school and community liaison coordinator to implement and maintain effective communication across schools and any other youth serving organizations. And our nurse care coordinator provides care coordination for any individual in our center that has a complex medical picture. Our Traumatic Loss Coalition offers collaboration and support to professionals working with school age youth. The mission of the TLC is excellence in suicide prevention and trauma response, assistance to schools following unfortunate losses due to suicide, homicide, accident, or illness. We provide on-site traumatic loss response to ensure that those working with youth from a variety of disciplines and programs have up-to-date knowledge about mental health issues, suicide prevention, traumatic grief, and resiliency enhancement. Next slide, please. With a focus on our services for individuals over the age of 18, we have our assisted outpatient treatment services program, which is court mandated outpatient treatment and case management services. Uh, most services take place outside and out in the community and our staff work closely with other providers to provide wraparound care. Our project outreach program provides case management services for people living with mental, mental health problems who are homeless or imminent risk of homelessness. Our Touchstone Intensive Support Service is a structured therapeutic environment that meets three times a week for three hours a day. It is an eight to 12 month program to help individuals over the age of 18 build a foundation of mental health skills to help them successfully identify and manage their, their stressors and triggers. Our Supported Employment Program works with individuals who are underemployed or unemployed due to their mental health problems. Our program provide, provides one-on-one -on -one job coaching that will allow people to choose, get, and keep maintain employment. Our co-occurring and relationship empowerment program is a client-driven wellness and recovery service dedicated to empowering individuals who struggle with co-occurring co-occurring mental health, substance use disorders, and relationship challenges to make choices in support of self-determination and personal growth. Services again are for individuals 18 and over that have a primary substance use disorder diagnosis. 
Our REACH for Recovery program is a program designed to support the recovery from co-occurring and or substance use disorders for individuals that are residents of Somerset County. Our options program is a 21 week program for perpetrators of domestic violence. It is a gender specific psychoeducational program to stop and prevent domestic violence in relationships. Next slide, please. Our access center at Richard Hall serves as, the single, as a single point of entry for individuals seeking services. Any individual seeking services would begin by contacting the access center and provide relevant information, which will assist us in understanding your needs and the best way to help. This process greatly reduces the wait time when you arrive for when you arrive by having all of your information available and on, on hand for easy access. Currently, all of our evaluations are by appointment only to ensure we're maintaining all safety guidelines outlined by the CDC, but we are offering appointments in person and via telehealth. During the initial evaluation, you have the opportunity to discuss concerns with your clin clinician and together determine an appropriate level of service that meets your needs. Uh, Richard Hall accepts all private insurance, carriers, Medicaid, and Medicare. All clients with insurance pay specific copays and co insurances that are set by the insurance company. And Somerset County residents who did not have insurance will be provided a fee accommodation based on their documented income and receive services. Self pay clients must provide proof of income at the first appointment or when changes to income incur. The session fee is based on family income and number of dependents. Next slide, please. On the screen, you'll see additional resources, including crisis services, hotlines, and outpatient services. We have a more comprehensive list of resources and support groups, which will be sent out to you after the presentation. Thank you so much, and feel free to reach out to either of us if you have questions or concerns. Thank you so much, Danielle and Naomi. And um, we're going to be moving on to our four-year and two-year college presenters. Um, I do want to remind our viewers that you can see us. We cannot see you. So feel free to relax at home with your tea. And um, again, thank you for being here. And I'd like to introduce um, Raritan Valley Community College's Gina Kailar. Hi, everyone. My name is Gina Kailars. I am the licensed professional counselor, clinically certified forensic counselor, a clinically certified anxiety treatment professional, and I am a certified mental health integrated medicine provider, and I am the full-time mental health counselor at Radham Valley Community College. My contact information is here. I'm going to leave that slide up for you so you can see how to contact me. Um, also, we do have two other part-time uh, counselors, Bambi Cool. She is a certified social worker. She works Mondays and Wednesdays and most Fridays. And Bruce Yellen is an LCSW. He works Tuesdays, Thursdays, and some Fridays. So a little bit about RV. Um, when coming to the local, we are your local community college. And when coming here, people think, oh, it's just grade 13. It's not a big deal. No, it is a college. You are going to be treated like you are an adult. That is good news and that is bad news. Um, the good news is that you're going to be able to make your decisions and we're going to help you do that. The bad news is there is a lot that we're going to expect that you're going to be able to understand and navigate. And it's not realistic for anybody to be able to do that. So counseling services is going to be here to help you do that. Um, we get it. We know that you can't figure it all out. And that's why we're here. We're here to help. So what we ask is that you just come and talk with us. We make ourselves available um, throughout the entire year, even over the summer. And we know that you know your journey to be successful is gonna be a difficult one. And we're here to make it as smooth as possible. The cost for us is free. So if the student needs a referral to a longer term care or more intensive work, I work with the student and the insurance company, whether they have insurance or not. And we work together to find the student a better fit um, if there's something longer term that needs to be done. But we will see students on a weekly basis. We have group therapy that goes on on a number of different topics. We um, you may be asked if you're willing to sit and talk with a, one of my graduate student interns. I normally have one or two throughout the school year. Um, and if you are not comfortable with that, you just want to speak with me, that's totally okay too. Um, I am available pretty much any time, normally Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. Um, I do vary my hours depending on your needs. 
if I need to adjust some time where I may start a little bit later and I can uh, go ahead and, and uh, you know, to take a later appointment, I will do that, whatever is going to be convenient. When to come. When you're feeling overwhelmed, confused, or you just need to vent, come and find me. I am normally in the College Center, Suite C-165. That said, um, I will always have chocolate, even if you just want to come and grab some chocolate or some other kind of candy, sit back in the office and go, you know what, I just need to sit and relax here for a minute. Okay, I'll put on some music and we will go ahead and just sit. You can munch on some food and we'll either chat or not. It's going to be totally up to whatever it is that you want to do. Um, anybody, we will see anybody under confidentiality from the ages of 16 years and up. According to Title IX, the Children, Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court consent by minor for treatment. At the age of 16, you are able to consent for mental health, behavioral health treatment without anyone else knowing. Um, the only time that changes is if you need medication. Well, good news, we don't do medication. So we will keep it confidential unless we have a duty to warn and we need to keep you safe. And I think that just kind of goes along across the board for everybody. Um, in, in the event that you are so high or drunk that we need to keep you safe, we will say something. In the event that you are suicidal or homicidal, we will say something. Uh, if there is a minor child in the home that is in jeopardy, uh, we will say something. Um, also, the only other time we'll say something is if you sign off for release of information and we will, we will say something. So we will work with each and every individual student. We know there's a lot of different situations going on. We are here to help navigate the world um, as best we can and as best you can. We don't think that we have all the answers, but we will help you find your answers. And I think that's the really important part is, you know, my answers are for me, your answers will be for you and we'll figure those ones out too. So, um, some of the things that we normally see um, in our counseling center, uh, there's a lot of time management. There's a lot of anger management. There's a lot of anxiety, especially nowadays. Um, we see the gamut of everything. So just come and talk with us and we will do what we can to help you out. Um, we do have a resource center on campus. So if someone is in need of food or any additional services, we will connect you with that. Uh, we have disabilities on campus where we will be able to connect you with disability services and be able to help you as best we can academically. Um, so that is who we are at RVCC. Um, I keep my, let me also say this, if you come and talk with me and I see you outside on campus walking around, I may not necessarily say hi to you because I want to keep your privacy. If you say hi when your friends are around, I will reply back. So I just want you to know that I'm not being rude, but it is a way for me to keep your privacy there. You will see walking around the halls, you will have people going, Gina, how you doing? I'm coming to see you later. And I'm like, okay, I'll see you soon. So I try to keep it open. I try to be um, just as, as ex not as accepting. Yes, I am always accepting, but as open and comfortable as possible. So I hope that helps, um, but that's who we are at RVCC. Thank you so much um, for letting us know about RVCC's counseling services. We're gonna move on to Monmouth University's um, Chris McKittrick, thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Chris McKittrick. I go by Chris and I use the pronouns he, his and him. Um, so really similar to what Gina was talking about, College counseling is very similar, but also very unique to the campuses, right? It might vary from community or two-year schools, trade schools, or four-year schools. So what I'm going to talk about is specific to Monmouth, but when you look at whatever school might be the best fit for you, please take that in mind. And even some of the handouts that we have prepared for you, feel free to take it as a shell and then cross out all the information and make it tailored to what you need at your school. So if you can go to the next slide. So counseling, right? We can use all these different terms, whether it's professional counseling, private counseling, individual counseling, right? So when you're looking for counseling on a 
a college campus, it seems like everybody is a counselor. There's a financial aid counselor, there's an EOF counselor, there's a custodial counselor. So this is where you need to know what is the counseling for which you're looking, right? So if it's mental health related, it's gonna probably have the term college counseling, professional counseling, or counseling and psychological services, right? A lot of our modality is one-on-one. -on -one. Um, at least at Monmouth University, almost everything we do is one-on-one. -on -one. When you look at some of the bigger four-year schools, you might get more of the groups and then some one-on-ones. Um, almost all the schools in New Jersey have a limited scope of service. Um, so it's time limited. Um, some schools have a very firm session cap, others don't. Um, and that's where you really need to know, navigate it when you're getting all the information. Scheduling, at least here at Monmouth University, you walk in, if you're in crisis, you'll be seen in 15 minutes. Uh, we're one of three schools in the United States that can say that every student that walks in will be able to see um, somebody within 15 minutes. If you're looking to schedule a, an appointment, we can probably get you in within 24 hours, if not sooner. Um, we'll do assessment. We do have a consulting psychiatrist, um, but we are the gatekeepers so that we make sure that there is a mental health concern. And then we will do a referral to the consulting psychiatrist if there is a need for medication. Um, when we talk about licensure, everybody, at least at Monmouth University, is licensed, whether it's a licensed clinical social worker, licensed professional professional counselor, licensed psychologist, right? License is really important. Um, if you go outside of New Jersey, some of the college counseling centers are actually exempt from having licensure. And so it could be volunteers. Um, so I do ask that you um, be a savvy consumer and look at what are the credentials of your staff. So if you can go to the next, next slide for me, please. So confidentiality. Whatever you say to us stays with us unless you feel you're going to hurt yourself, hurt somebody else, abuse child in the state of New Jersey, then we're legally bound by due to support service, help ensure safety, personal property, too, and the contingent community otherwise as required by law. Um, so I say that a few thousand times a year, um, but it really, it, we are legally bound by confidentiality. Um, so the student could be 16, could be 17, they walk into my office, they tell me a whole bunch of different things, unless it falls into one of these little caveats. Mom or dad can call me, the president of the university can call me and ask me about Johnny and I will neither confirm nor deny I know who Johnny is. Um, with that said, in times of crises, we're going to break confidentiality, health and safety comes first. And so kind of when do you know when to go to counseling or if your son, daughter, your student calls you, right? Who do you call? When do you decide to call counseling? So here's kind of a, a decision flow chart for you. Once again, tailor it to your school and if you're going to orientations, you're, you're visiting other schools, ask them, what would they do, right? How do they kind of make the decision? So if it's an imminent threat to safety, right? That's where it's either gonna be 911 or calling the campus police, right? If it's sub threshold of that, that's when you gotta figure out, right? Is it kind of worrisome you're gonna lose sleep over it? There's usually a 24 hour um, police service or there's at least a protocol. Um, protocol is an online response system. So you give a call, they get sent to a call center, they get information, then they can dispatch as necessary. But in the state of New Jersey, every college counseling center has to have 24 hour support. Um, it might not be specific to that student or to that campus, but it has to be there. So this is where our college council or our college students are in great hands and have tons of resources if they choose to access them. And so this is if it's your son, your daughter, your niece, your student, encourage them. Most places it's free. At Monmouth University, we're free, right? If you're gonna go to a private place, it's gonna be anywhere to 100 to $200 per hour. So this is don't use and abuse the college counseling centers, but feel free to use them as best. Here, oh, actually you can go to the consultations. Kevin, you're reading my mind, I, I love it. Um, so while I deal with with kind of that direct clinical service, all these different issues are popping up, right? And there's different places on campus that our students will go to, whether it's food insecurity, whether it's a question about FERPA, that's usually parents are gonna to go to that one, right? Well, who, who can tell, why can I see grades? Who's gonna tell me why? Can you tell me this? Um, if it's issues of harassment, right? If it's suicidal thoughts, anxiety, depression, right? Who are you gonna to talk to? But also what if there's an issue uh, at an internship or an employment piece? Well, all of these different areas on campus are great referrals and they'll call us in. When we're in person, they'll actually call me into their office to kind of do a drive-by introduction. Um, so this is where, even if the college counseling center doesn't have the answer for you, if you have that question, most likely they'll be able to find the person on campus to get back to you and give you the answer. Um, so here's tons of information. Once again, I say use this as a shell. And if you choose to go to a, a different school other than the mama, feel free to cross it out and find all those pieces of information for that school. Because if you have it, then hopefully you don't need it. But if you need it, it's really a lot better if you already have it completed. So cool. Thank you.
so much, Chris. Um, such valuable information for our students getting ready to go to college and parents because you want to know too how to reach these services in case your child is needing some help and if you are a student to be able to find some help on your own too. Um, so last but not least, we're going to segue over to Sergeant Brian Shermer of the US Marines, uh, who's going to tell us about mental health in the military. And I'm very, very glad that you're here because I think this is something we don't talk about enough. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and actually get to speak with y'all on this. I've uh, been in the Marine Corps now for nine years, so this is something that I've dealt with heavily throughout my time. Uh, and I can go ahead and say, you know, the military is definitely different. It's different from the college lifestyle. It's different from just going out to work around home uh, because you're not around home. <laughs> I'm originally from North Carolina. I've been stationed in South Carolina and Japan, and now I'm in New Jersey. So it's definitely very, very much so different in the areas that you'll go and the places that you'll see. And mental health in the military, a lot of people think that we don't actually get help. And that's definitely not true. Uh, at least not so now anymore. Now there are a lot more sources out there for you to be able to get help, no matter what it is, uh, whether it is suicide prevention or if you have an, a substance abuse issue, there's a lot of different sources. And the best thing about it is every single Marine is trained on this yearly. We are trained to recognize the signs, uh, make sure that we ask the questions. If we have to take people to our once many different sources, then that's what we do. Um, the biggest thing is uh, just caring about your fellow Marine to your left and your right. Uh, that's kind of the biggest key thing. And I think that's the way that the military in general is heading nowadays, which is phenomenal. Um, one of the biggest sources that you do have, you can see it on the screen right now, is actually Military One Source. Uh, that is something that is available throughout all branches, and it is very much so a source that will point you in the right direction of whoever you need to go to. But if you're out there and you, you know, you're just feeling down, you're struggling, or maybe you just need to speak with someone, there's a lot of other sources. And the best thing about most of these sources is they are confidential. Uh, so our chaplains on base, there's always going to be chaplains on base. They are actually someone that you can utilize to go to and speak about your problems, as well as licensed counselors. They're called MFLACs for us or Military Family Life Counselors. Uh, these are people that have been serving or either served or have been associated with the military for many, many years, um, most of them 20 plus years. So they have a very unique understanding of mental health inside of the military and they are able to come and meet you. You can call them up and you can meet them within the next hour, if less, if you absolutely need it. Uh, or they can just meet you somewhere where you can just get some food, sit down, talk about what's going on and just be able to actually filter out what's going on in your life and really be able to see if there's an avenue of approach that you're able to actually utilize to get better. Um, one of the biggest things is Navy Medical actually provides licensed therapists, physicians, uh, psychologists. Uh, and the best thing about it is you don't need to tell anybody. Uh, you can absolutely go to them. It's 100% free uh, through the military as well. Like just many of these resources, if you need it, it's there. And a lot of people don't actually know about it, but that's something that is definitely changing. The biggest thing is overall help and your mental health especially is something that I think needs to be talked about more. And it's definitely something that I'm very close with. I have, like I said, gone through my fair share of struggles and I have sought out these services. And I can tell you without a doubt in my mind that they'll definitely help you out in the best of ways. Whether you do short term or long term, you can see them once and if you're good, then you're good. If you need to see them more than once, they're absolutely there for you at any point in time. Uh, that's kind of like the, the big, big key thing is just know that no matter what you're going through, someone is there for you. If it's a fellow Marine that you absolutely trust, then I guarantee you that they will be there and they will take care of you. But if you feel like you need to seek a third party view on whatever the situation may be, whether it's being away from home, stress with doing the job, or you know 
you just have a lot going on in your mind and you've got to talk to somebody, uh, the biggest thing I can say is if you're in the military, just do it. Uh, go and speak with someone. Don't hold that stuff in. And that's where I think a lot of people think is, you know, hey, they're just going to hold it in. They're not going to say anything. This might ruin my career. It absolutely won't. Uh, like I said, I've had to use these count these services myself and I'm still in and I'm going to be in for the next 11 years. So, uh, you know, I don't plan on stopping just because, you know, small bump in the road. So uh, a lot of this stuff you won't be able to actually see here, but every single military installation, every single base and unit that you are attached with absolutely has all of these services. They actually come around quite frequently just to make sure that, hey, we're here, you know about us, and they'll, they'll always be around. Uh, they give out their numbers. Every single base number is different, but everything is always listed. And the best thing about this as well is if you're married like myself uh, later on down the road, or if your family is having issues, these resources are available to them as well. It's not just the service member that goes through struggles. It's also the family members that go through struggles. And no matter where you're at, even here in the state of New Jersey, where I'm not located on a base, I'm here in Somerville, New Jersey, you still have access through TRICARE, which is, again, the military's primary care provider for health insurance. And they will give you a referral to any licensed therapist, any place that you need to go here, uh, so long as they accept TRICARE, which most places do accept TRICARE. Um, so that's actually like the biggest thing is it's, it's not just you, it's your families that are being taken care of. If you start a family later on down the line in the military and your kids need assistance, they are absolutely covered as well. And they have all of these resources available to them. Uh, I don't really have much else. The, the biggest thing is no matter which path you go, military, two year, four year, or if you just go out into the world, just understand that if something's going on, don't hold it in. The biggest thing you can do and the best thing that you can do is reach out to somebody. You might not know them or you might know them, but they're going to help you. Don't hold it in. Absolutely reach out because it's, it's never worth it if you don't. And holding stuff in just doesn't help anybody, I promise. Thank you, Surgeon Shermer. You are so right. And um, you know, thank you to you and all of our panelists for speaking so, um, so clearly about all the resources that we have available to us. Um, um, let's see, viewers, if you have any questions, I think we can do the hand raise function. I'm not sure, but we do have the the Q&A function. Um, I'm going to introduce to you my coworker, Kevin Rice. He's also a student assistance counselor at Washington Hills in just a moment. But if you have any questions for any of the panelists or just a general question, please uh, drop those in the Q&A box and we can read them um, if this hands. Not, I think we can do that. I'm um, sorry. Um, or you can speak with it with the hand raising function. Um, we welcome your questions. We want you to leave this experience having some information and, and knowing what to do in case that there is some need. Um, but for now, I'm going to give the floor to um, Kevin Rice. And oh, Kevin, just before, I just want to um, do a quick shout out and thank you to um, our director of uh, school counseling services, Mr. Jason Sabino, for all the support. Um, that he gives us in preparing these programs. Um, truly um, a gentleman who has a heart for mental health in the community and in our school. So um, we're glad to, I know you're, you're watching in the background today. Um, so thank you for being here and for all your support. And Kevin, I'm gonna give the floor to you. Thank you, Gwen. Um, thank you, Sergeant Shermer, Dr. McKittrick, Danielle, Christy, Gina, Naomi. Um, yeah, so just to, even though this is, you know, uh, titled and focused on life after high school, just if there's any seniors on this uh, Zoom right now or, or, or their parents or even juniors or any other age, just for the seniors though in particular, you're not gone yet. So please know, kind of stating the obvious, but there's a few months left and uh, Ms. Blake and or I are available just to touch on that briefly. 
Um, you've probably heard this before or seen it before while you, during your four years, but uh, Ms. Blake typically works with students last names beginning M through Z. Uh, I work with students typically last names A through L. Uh, and then also just to point out, there's also Care Plus just for, for parents and students to know. It's a step up, if you will, in terms of service. Uh, Maggie Panagias is a licensed clinical social worker. So that is also a, a cost-free option at the high school. A um, little bit of the difference with, with, with Ms. Blake or I, it's a little more in the you know, confidentiality realm um, with care, but certainly we do reach out to parents, as same as Dr. McKittrick said, if we're concerned about a student's safety or well-being. With Care Plus, there is the parent permission required, just, just to kind of put that out there. Uh, we do individual counseling, group at times, although that was a little more challenging this year with you know not being able to really meet in groups in person, but we did some Zoom groups. Um, crisis intervention, we offer resources, but again, as Sergeant Shermer said, pretty much just to state simply, just, just reach out, you know, to a trusted adult and whether it's us that you end up speaking with or we're just helping you get to somebody else, whether it's you know um, services through the county, or it's to parents and setting something up outside of school or Care Plus or whatever the case may be, um, please just reach out and and parents please encourage your your children to to reach out to one of you and then to us or, or you know whatever the case may be. But but keeping it all inside is certainly not um, the best the best path. But um, again. The theme here you'll see is through all these different resources and, and environments we're talking about, college and county and community college and military, just start somewhere and then let the people that are there to help, you know, help determine what is best for you or for your child. Uh, that's that's pretty much uh, the gist of it. So we're here to help. And again, we're in the high school. Please reach out anytime, email, call. Uh, we'd like to help if we can. And just to acknowledge, if I don't remember it later, before we go to Q and A, um, as as Christy Soriano had said, we are going to, or maybe it was Danielle. Sorry, Danielle. <laughs> we are going to send an email to all attendees uh, after this event and share just county resources, and some other resources too. Just so if you're, you know, this this is being recorded, but you can also just be on the lookout for an email from. Miss Blake and I with some of these resources discussed and, and some additional ones too. So please know that. And, and you can always write back to us if needed. So on that note, uh, again, thank you panelists for joining and thank you, Gwen. Um, we can kind of jump into the Q&A if you will, um, if anyone has any questions out there they'd like to ask, as, as Miss Blake said, just put them in the Q&A. We can try to do our best to get to all of them. Yeah, sure, I would like, um... Just going to throw out a question about um, addiction specific treatment. I think mostly for colleges and military. Um, if there are any specific things that you do differently to handle those issues when they come across your threshold. Thank you. So I see, Ms. Blake, I, I don't want to speak over you if you were going to say, but there's a, a question. If, to provide a list of medical professionals, uh, for example, psychiatrists who we refer to for those who need a higher level of care. We, we on an individual basis, you know, case by case, we'll, we'll often suggest certain um, services in the area. However, we usually don't give an exhaustive list, but, but we can, you know, if any parent does reach out to us, we can work with you on that. It does, what we'll often say, it's based on, um, your insurance, you know, if that's if that's a factor. So we always encourage parents to go through insurance just to see because that can be a barrier. But there are some in the area we we typically do suggest, but we'll never give a um you know a must or or have to. But we we all, we will definitely give suggestions of you know people we've we've had some experience with in the past and and I've heard good reviews and whatnot. But um, yeah, going through insurance is also always a good a good option. And also a community agency wise, there's also um, some agencies that we often refer to that have that service uh, within their, um, their offerings. Um, and panelists, if, if there are any um, 
you know, different ways that you are aware of that can be helpful to get to psychiatry. I know that's also often a long way. It's a little bit hard sometimes to get to somebody. What are some of your experiences in needing to refer a student for um, services, including a physician and medication? Well, I can just speak to them. Naomi again from Richard Hall. So we do have psychiatrists as well as psychiatric nurse um, nurses that um, do see individuals that come into our center. Um, so that's definitely a service that we can provide um, and definitely at the flexibility of kind of when appointments are needed, if evening appointments are needed. So that's absolutely something that's provided as well. Um, so I did want just want to put that in there again. Um, they would go through our access center um, and just indicate that they're looking specifically for psychiatric, you know, psychiatry services. Um, if they're looking for psychiatry only services, or if they're looking for psychiatry and therapy, just indicating that we would make sure to expedite um, kind of what their what their need was. And we do take all insurances, so you know that is um, if that is a factor when looking for a psychiatrist, it's something that we can accommodate. Thank mm -hmm. you. No problem. So for the military standpoint on this, and sorry, Chris, I saw that you just unmuted yourself. Uh, for the military standpoint on this, you simply have to go to two medical. Uh, for us, it doesn't matter what time of day, there's always someone posted up in medical, even if it's after hours, there's emergency services. Uh, and if you need help, it's as simple as going there. You tell them exactly what you're there for and they will get you in contact with a person. If the individual isn't there, if depending on the severity and what's going on in terms of, you know, if you need to speak with someone now, they will outsource to outside agencies to be able to get you that help, as well as just set you up and make sure that you are taken care of and that you are fine. Um, in terms of medication, that is uh, doctor dependent, uh, our Navy corpsmen, as well as the doctors that we have that are also officers inside of the Navy, they will take a, into consideration what is going on, what might, you know, might need to be prescribed, and then they will handle that inside of medical as well. Um, if you do, say your family member or spouse, along, someone along those lines needs to see someone, no matter where they're at, they can get a referral, they can be seen out in town. And then again, it's at the doctor's discretion at that point in terms of medication inside of the military. Uh, but that's kind of how we handle it. Everything is kind of run through our Navy medical and wherever you're at. And then being able to just use other sources uh, if you need to get referrals or as such to be able to speak with someone or get seen. Thank you. I was just going to offer that psychology today has a phenomenal search function. Um, and this is where people look out for psychiatric nurse practitioners. Um, they typically have a shorter wait term if your insurance accepts it. And this is, it's so awful to have to say this, but a lot of times some insurances won't cover them. Um, and it has to be a psychiatrist. And right now, at least in Monmouth County, the average wait time to see a psychiatrist as a new patient, six to eight weeks. Um, and this is where I'm, I'm not intimately familiar with your county, but we also have a walk-in um, behavioral health clinic in Monmouth County that will also meet with a psychiatrist. So right now, because of COVID, you do have to make an appointment, but they can get you in within 24 hours. So this is something also to, to consult with the local hospitals if they have um, a behavioral health clinic. Thank you. So I was going to say something very similar to that, um, that go to definitely psychology today. Uh, also take a look at um, the local psychiatric emergency screening services. They sometimes have not just walk-ins, but will do appointments so that you can get medications until, or to tide you over to that next appointment. Um, Somerset, Hunter and Counties do have a, a wait list anywhere from six to eight weeks for uh, psychiatric care. So we try to do what we can to work with the local clinics um, as well as PEST in Somerset County. Thank you, PEST is a great service. Thank you so much. Um, we have a, a question from an attendee. Um, which drug rehab centers in the Somerset area do you recommend for students? And can we provide attendees a list? Um, 
So I had compiled um, a list of resources. Um, I didn't break it down by mental health and substance use, but I know just kind of looking at it right now, I know there are some on here that do both. Um, like I believe Somerset Treatment Services, um, High Focus, um, Guided Life Structures, and I think Family and Community Services of Somerset, but um, all those will be on the list um, that is sent out to you guys, but I will copy and paste right now and can I put can I put it into the chat? Like will will they be able to see that? I think so. Yeah, yes, I think so. yes to all panelists. And we can also <laughs> include that into our email at the end as well. Yes. If you email Thank it. you, Christine. Okay. And Naomi, do you guys do substance use too, right? Yep, sorry, I just had to unmute you mute myself. Yep, so we do do um, co-occurring um, outpatient services. So we have individual therapy um, that's provided and we also have an intensive outpatient program um, that's nine hours a week of group therapy. Thank you. Yeah. We have just, again, it's probably uh, overlaps a good amount. We have, um, again, not to throw too many things at you, on, the, on our, high school website if you go up to the uh quick access it's it's warrior wellness and then under the resources page there's a link to a document that has a, a list of local um substance treatment individuals and and groups so that's also another resource which again probably a lot of it's going to overlap with what um christy is going to share that we will then miss blake and i will email to all the attendees the next day or so but on the yeah on the warrior wellness page under counseling on the on the school website there's um under resources there's there's some links to a lot of this information including the one page that's you can click on the link it's specifically uh, for substance abuse concerns oh another good question <laughs> very very good question uh, what do you recommend for test anxiety this is something i think a lot of students face Panelists would like to answer that, what their thoughts are. I would say just, I'm gonna chime in real quick. For test anxiety, it, it's, not to jump ahead, but you know, if, you, if, it, if this is, while we're still in high school, while the student's still in high school, if it's not already something that's been addressed with the school counselor slash SAC, please reach out because sometimes we can help just come up with some strategies or even, you know, some, some flexibility uh, with, with teachers and whatnot to, to leave it a little broad, please reach out. Um, but I know students will eventually leave and go off to, you know, they flap their wings and fly away, whether it's to, you know, university or, or community college or both or, or neither or military. Um, it's, I, I think, Maybe this is being too simplistic, but talking to someone at least up front, that's not going to just magically make it go away. But I think when someone at least can acknowledge what's challenging them and kind of, you know, break it down a little bit and get into it and then uh, work out some strategies that may help that individual person, I, I think those can come into play and be helpful um, to start. But I, I you know, I, I think test anxiety also ties into a worry, not always, but of, of how much time they have or, you know, the, so uh, I think if something along the lines of the, the time of what they're doing is, is addressed or talked about, that can be helpful too. So I would agree with you, Kevin Niles. Oh, sorry. No, no, I, I apologize, was I talking <laughs> over anybody? Okay. Um, but I also wanted to say some of the things that um, we have definitely found with some of the teens that we've worked with is also just kind of, um, not only the individual component, but sometimes group therapy can be really helpful just to, you know, kind of get feedback from peers um, as well as to kind of what's worked in terms of text anxiety um, and what's worked in certain situations. And that's definitely been a supportive um, service. So it's definitely something that I'd like to encourage. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, I can say that test anxiety is very real and, you know, talk about it, get some help and, um, you know, it's something that a lot of professionals can help with. Um, I'm going to move on to a couple more questions because we're almost out of time. Um, and if anyone does have more questions, please get in contact with Kevin or I will be happy to um, help you find the person who can answer your question if we can't. But the next question, um, have panelists seen an increase in anxiety this year with virtual learning and students 
being home with COVID. Gina, I see you nodding your head vigorously, so I will yeah. let you speak to that. <laughs> um, it goes right along, I think, with what everyone else is seeing is we, that number has jumped and it's for a lot of reasons. Um, it's because of the isolation where we are, as human beings, we are, we like to be with people. We like to know we connect with people. And it's harder to connect on virtual, especially when people are not having their cameras on, um, to have that eye contact. Um, yes, it takes a little bit longer on virtual, but it still can be done. Um, when, it, for, when COVID first started and they said, no, social distance, and I kept going, no physical distance, we can't not socially connect. So, and, and I know a lot of other people were thinking the same thing. Yes, we want to be safe. Yes, we don't want to spread anything anywhere, but we want to stay connected with people. Um, and people who are unable to get connected, their anxiety has definitely increased. Um, and it's not just that. There's a lot of what next. You know, it's the unknown. It's the unexpected. It's, and that we need to address and talk about it. And I've seen, we've seen a, a great jump there as well. Um, absolutely, and we're all here for you. Um, and uh, another question about um, virtual consultations. Um, I know we don't hear, know all of the community agencies, what they're doing right this minute. I think a lot are doing virtual. Can anyone here speak to what you're doing um, if you're doing virtual consultations or and or person in person? mobile response we have uh, continued to go in person since the pandemic started and we also are offering telehealth as well. Thank you. Richard Hall that's the same as well. Um, we're offering uh, telehealth appointments um, for anybody that chooses uh, but we also have in-person appointments available for anyone that doesn't have access to telehealth services or would prefer in-person services. I'll quickly say I've had a few students that have connected with um, a couple therapists in the area, and they were they are face to face, which you know, then those particular parents and students really preferred that, uh, so it worked out well. But if, if whoever asked that question or anybody else, I I can um, just shoot me an email if you want, and I can at least give you know this the com contact information for the couple of the ones in the area that I've had some, some luck with with my students. All right. Um, we don't have any more questions in the queue right now. Um, participants, thank you so much for coming to watch and get some information. Panelists, thank you for giving up uh, some time this evening uh, for this really important topic. We are um, over the moon that so many of you, that you all agreed to come and be with us tonight and answer our questions and, you know, let us and our parents and our students know about the next steps and how they can have their wellness services um, beyond high school. Um, we're so glad that you're all here with us tonight and um, parents, students, if you have extra questions, we are going to have this online so you can watch it again and watch some of the things that are in the chat. A lot of information got um, put up into the chat by our panelists, and we can also hook you up with the information that you need as well. Um, is there anything else, Mr. Rice, that you have? No, I think that's it. Again, just for seniors, our parents, you know, this Senior year can be a real mix of emotions and, and, and you know, ups, downs all over the place. A lot of students will say they're, they're just ready to go, maybe this year more than ever, but also the flip side is a lot of seniors start to kind of, it starts to get real, like, oh, wow, I'm, I'm really almost out of here. And, and that could bring with it a lot of feelings. So again, while you're still in school, in the high school, please reach out to Ms. Blake or I, but, but it, that being said, I just know my time, I went to Rutgers and I don't think it got real for me until I actually like, had to step out of my parents' minivan and move in and <laughs> I kind of froze. So, and then the first few months, it, it was a transition. You know, it certainly was a transition. And, and when I look back, I, um, I'm sure there were resources, but I can't say I knew about them as much as nowadays they're, they're put out there more. And certainly, a, you know, a group of panelists like this helps get the word out. But I think I, you know, looking back, I don't think I know it would have been nice to have someone to kind of bounce a lot of that homesickness and transitional challenges 
uh, to, to bounce it off of. So it doesn't have to be a crisis. And I think I speak for everyone on this panel, um, you know, that it doesn't have to be till you can't take it anymore. Just, it can be something just on your mind, you know, just reach out um, and, and see where things go. But but just don't wait is, is a bit of advice. Just reach out everyone on here and whatever, you know, wherever you end up next, there's, there's support services likely wherever you're gonna go. So please take advantage of them. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, have a great night, wonderful rest of your spring and summer. And we're here if there's ever a need for you to reach out. Okay, thank you all. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.